Hey amigos, you're listening to the English Made Simple podcast. This is episode number 87, numero 87. Whoa, is this really number 87? I'm slowly losing count. Well, hello there amigos, my name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net EnglishMadeSimple.net ¿Qué onda? ¿Cómo están? How are you? Hope you're doing fantastic! Excellent, glad to hear! Well, it's been a busy few months down at the EMS headquarters, which is also known as my living room. A few episodes ago, I think it was the short and sweet episode number 59, I announced that English Made Simple was changing its uh, look and feel. The website was changing its look and feel. And guess what? The English Made Simple website has a new design. EMS had a makeover and it is almost complete. I'm so excited. Uh, check it out when you have time. I think it shows off my personality quite well. If you are listening to this episode in February or March of 2017, you will notice that the website is still not finished. I'm still tweaking it, fixing it a bit. Thanks to Horacio from Bolivia who gave me a great idea on improving the design of my homepage. Thanks, man. I'm still playing with my website. Anyhow, it's easy to use and I love it. And that's what counts. That's what matters. Thanks to everyone who supported me, gave me moral support in continuing with the podcast. Uh, believe it or not, it will almost be a year since I launched my very first episode. I know. Time flies. How quickly it goes. Oh my God. Okie dokie. Enough of this gibberish, Milena. Welcome to today's short and sweet episode, episode number 87. I'm going to use this short and sweet episode to carry on from the previous episode and introduce you to some very important keywords and these will be useful to you when you yourself will need to give directions to someone in the future. I hope today's episode will help you expand your vocabulary so listen carefully amigos and uh, we will learn how to give directions in the next episode number 88 so stick around for that. Now Today, first things first, when it comes to asking or giving directions, we need to understand the cardinal points in English. Okay, what did you say, Milena? <laughs> it sounded like you were speaking a language of science. Cardinal points. Look, I'm not a scientist or an astrophysicist or a physicist. I'm not that clever. I just read horoscopes. That's about it. I can't even count properly. <laughs> Uh, what I mean uh, by cardinal points, it sounds like it's a scientific word. In Spanish, this is puntos cardinales. We use cardinal points for orientation. The cardinal points guide us in the right direction. I think by having the compass with you, orientation would be much easier. But how many of us carry compasses when we go out? I don't have one. I just follow the stars at night. Now back to the topic now. What are cardinal points? Cardinal points are the four main directions of the compass. Compass in Spanish is compass or brújula. Uh, on the compass we have the north, south, east and west points. North, uh, norte, sur, este and oeste in Spanish. Everyone knows uh, that the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. The sun goes up in the east and it goes down in the west. A proper way to say this is the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. We use verbs to rise and to set in this case. By the way, um, sunrise as one word is a noun. Uh, in Spanish this is amanecer. And sunset uh, is one word and um, also a noun, and it means la puesta de sol. Okie dokie, easy peasy Japanesey. Why am I telling you all this? Well, sometimes when people give you directions, they would say things like, Hey Carlos, if you want to go to the museum, you need to head north, which means you need to go towards the north. If someone gave me those instructions and I didn't have a map with me, I would be like, what? What did you say? 
where the hell is north from here? I would immediately say, sorry, can you please point me in the right direction? I don't know where I am. I would feel like I'm in one of those episodes of Game of Thrones, you know, just head to the east and there you will find King's Landing, the largest city of the Seven Kingdoms. <laughs> Can't wait for the next season of Game of Thrones. Anyway, let's continue, amigos. More new words coming your way. When you go traveling and visiting new places, you will most likely be spending time sightseeing. Sightseeing, an interesting word. It is one word, it's a noun. And according to Well Intelligente or the online dictionary, sightseeing is the activity of visiting places of interest in a particular location. I don't know if there is uh, an equivalent word in Spanish. Uh, I haven't found it yet. I would say something like visitar or ver nuevos lugares. People like to go sightseeing when they travel and see new places. People like to explore new places. That's what makes uh, traveling so interesting, I guess. What I like to do when I travel is remember different landmarks. As soon as I leave my hotel or a hostel or hostal in Spanish, I would establish a reference point so that I wouldn't get lost. In this case, I would look around me and try to find any distinct landmarks. For example, an interesting building or a place that I could easily remember. So my advice uh, for you when you go traveling is to pay special attention to landmarks when you are out and about, you know, sightseeing. So what is, uh, what is a landmark? It's a prominent landscape feature. It could be a building or a garden, uh, something that is easily recognizable uh, and it's a point of reference. It will help you easily identify your location. I do this all the time when I travel. Uh, it just makes it easier to find my way back to the hotel or wherever I happen to be staying at. An example of a landmark would be a museum, a monument, a fountain, una fuente de agua. A landmark could even be a tree, an interesting tree. It's a recognizable feature. It could be man-made or a natural feature. And it's used for navigation purposes, I guess. In Spanish, this would be puntos o lugares de referencia. It's important to notice uh, landmarks around you because they will help you when you have to ask for directions and they will also help you when other people give you directions. They could say things like, walk two blocks from here and when you pass the post office, you will reach your final destination. And of course, we will learn more about this in the next episode. Uh, we're going to learn about giving directions and receiving directions. Uh, so hang in there, amigos, be patient. I'd like to quickly summarize today's episode. So today we have learned about the four main cardinal points uh, and the names of each point. This will help you later on when we learn about giving directions. We've also learned new words such as sightseeing, landmarks, sunrise and sunset, right? Cool bananas. In the next episode, which will be episode number 88, I will teach you how to give directions. So guys and girls, thank you for joining me in today's short and sweet episode. You've been jamming with Milanita. Until next time, amigos, hasta la próxima.